welcome ma'am bhavani ma'am welcome good morning ma'am how are you i am yeah, ma'am doing well i'm Do i'm ani from department of english wishing good morning ma'am hello ma'am yes ma'am and we'll start by 9:00 ma'am okay ma'am yes, ma we'll just wait for it's 9:46 now yeah it's up in 9:00 yes ma'am yes. yes. Uh, Joshua, are you here? Yes, ma'am. Will you be able to record Joshua today? No, ma'am. No, it's not possible, right? Okay. Yes. Uh. Okay. Uh, a very pleasant morning to one and all gathered through this online platform. Let's begin today's session with prayer. Oh God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time of our. Thank you for the gift of life and for what you are. And we thank you especially for Bhavani, Ma'am, of God, Lord, bless her abundantly. And uh, Lord, thank you, Lord, for what she's going to do in this webinar and uh, give her the clarity and the right choice of words and proper network connection that is required. and help every person who is attending this webinar or god to be blessed by it and help all of us to have a fruitful fruitful uh, session of god and let this day be a blessing for all of us we ask this in the precious name of jesus christ amen a very pleasant morning once again and it's my delight and gives me immense pleasure to be uh, to talk about the resource person for today uh, Ms. Bhavani Hari Krishnan, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for accepting uh, our invitation and uh, uh, for making yourself available through this on online platform in spite of your busy, uh, busy schedule, ma'am. Uh, I just like to share a few words about you. 
and um, ma'am is a psychologist and counselor at present uh, she is um, her, she owns a clinic at shanmugapuram uh, colony in vilupuram uh, her name of a clinic is choice and her hobby, hobbies are reading gardening painting sewing blogging cooking so that shows her versatile right she's a very versatile personality she's both uh, 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 interested in technical as well as uh, domestic affairs and um, her area of specialization is child and adolescent psychology family and relationship counseling clinical psychology and uh, she also gives regression therapy for past uh, for people who have grudges in their past life she also coaches people for their career and uh, right now she is enrolled in addiction ma uh, management in nim hans and um, so it's uh, she is also a blogger and a web content creator and uh, ma'am thank you ma'am it's uh, i think the need of the r ma'am in this uh, time of uh, uh, digitalization i think building relationship is very very important uh, where uh, currently the teenagers are lacking and uh, i'm happy that you are going to enrich us on the topic which is the need of the r uh, thank you ma'am for joining and now the session is yours ma'am you can take over thank you ma'am ma'am you have to unmute yourself ma'am kindly unmute yourself yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that introduction, ma'am. And uh, I, I would like to add just one more thing to this. Uh, let's just close our eyes for a minute and connect ourselves to the divine source and to each other and to each other's hearts in particular, so that we can learn from each other. i am supposed to be an expert notice that i use the word supposed but i am here to learn from you as well now let's slowly and gently open our eyes and begin can i share my screen ma'am ma'am yes ma'am you can share okay. Is everyone able to see my screen right now? Yes, ma'am. We can see the screen, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the topic given to me today was building relationships, and I really enjoy talking about this topic. So let's get right down to it. So what does the word relationship mean? Can someone give me the answer to this? Uh. can you give me a minute ma'am i'll join from another device as well so that i can see who's talking uh, okay ma'am but i think the number has reached 100 and 100 okay so i don't know whether you'll be correct you'll be able to connect okay okay got it ma'am um okay ma'am because i'll try anyway let's see if it happens yes ma'am otherwise because i would also like to be able to see who i'm speaking to uh there is a youtube link ma'am shall i uh, shall i ask sir to share it to you maybe yes ma'am please in case if you are not able to join through google meet yeah, yeah. Yes, what is something the youtube link Yes, uh, I'll ask Susi Kiran sir to forward to you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, in that case, can you coordinate for me, ma'am? 
like if someone has a question if someone is raising their hands and i'm not able to see it can you just help me with that uh yes ma'am i'll ask i'll ask for a volunteer ma'am student volunteer yes. can anyone from ma coordinate this from fr first ma people have joined right i need one volunteer to coordinate as per you have second ba joined per c i here okay uh, joshua you are the host right now right can you join uh, can you yes, have a coordinate uh, just coordinate just check in the chat box and inform ma'am okay ma'am uh, whenever uh, anyone is uh, uh typing something okay yes okay and roll number 15 also has volunteer you can coordinate both of you can coordinate thank you ma'am okay. thank you ma'am thank you for so, yes ma'am yeah so what does the word relationship mean can someone tell me the meaning of the word relationship and uh, for those who of you who prefer tamil the topic is bandhangal bandhangal and bandhangal apdina enna what does the word relationship mean can someone tell me give me the answer to that what according to you is relationship ma'am uh, is it a connection between people yes is it most certainly is a connection between two people or two or more people even okay so it indicate how two or more people are connected to each other and there is one other thing how two or more people behave towards each other that also defines a relationship okay so why are relationships important in life why are relationships so important again i need one of you to give me the answer ஏன் பந்தங்கள் அப்படின்றது வந்து ஏன் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் நம் வாழ்க்கையில பந்தங்கள்ன்றது ஏன் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் anybody else yes uh, to care of feelings emotions no? okay that again is another interesting perspective very nice thank you for your responses so relationships are very important because it improves the quality of our life how we handle these in the bandhangal ella namba eppadi kaiyalramo அது வந்து நம்ம குவாலிட்டி ஆஃப் லைஃபுக்கு அது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியம் த குவாலிட்டி ஆஃப் அவர் லைஃப் இஸ் டிட்டர்மின் பை ஹவு வி ஹேண்டில் அவர் ரிலேஷன்ஷிப்ஸ் வித் ஈச் அதர் அண்ட் த வேர்ல்ட் அரவுண்ட் இஸ் ஓகே நவ் லெட்ஸ் கோ டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு ஹாவ் அ ஸ்மால் ஆக்டிவிட்டி நவ் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் திஸ் ஆக்டிவிட்டி அபவுட் நவ் ஐ வாண்ட் யூ டு இமேஜின் அ சுச்சுவேஷன் வேர் ஹவு மெனி ஆஃப் யூ பிளே வீடியோ கேம்ஸ் i'm sure since all of you are students all of you play video games okay so here's the situation you are playing a video game when your mom gets home from work she turns off the power and you don't have any battery backup as soon as she turns off the power your computer shuts down and she tells you to go and do your work go and do your assignments go and study whatever even though at the moment you have you don't have anything to study and all your progress you have reached so many levels in your game and all your progress in the in the game has been lost because your mother has turned off the computer i mean she has turned off the power and you don't have any backup and 
uh, the computer shuts down. So uh, I hope uh, you have a paper and pencil with you or a pen or something. So just note down how you would feel. Note down your emotions. How would you feel when, you're, when you are almost at that point of reaching the next level, which you have been trying for such a long time, and your mom suddenly comes and switches off the computer? OK, now write down how you feel. I'll give you one minute for that. Just think on it and write down how you feel about it. Has anyone finished? Would anyone like to share with me how you would feel? Would anyone like to share? Ma'am, we'll uh, feel so much irritated, ma'am, and we'll start okay. arguing. Yeah, you'll start arguing. Okay, that's one thing. What else? Can you tell? Okay, now what I would like you to do is I want another volunteer. I want two of you to role play this. Can someone do that for me? Any volunteers to role play for me? One volunteer is the mother, and the, the the other volunteer is the child. Volunteers, please. It would be interesting if you would volunteer. And can all of you turn on your videos? So I'll know who I'm talking to. Okay, so uh, can someone else tell me how you would feel if your mother does that? One more, I'll take one more response and we'll move on. You feel irritated, would anybody get angry and shout at her and bang the door and do all those things? No response. Ma'am, would uh, break into tears. Pardon me? I can't hear you. Would break into tears of losing the tears. You break into tears, yes. And what else happens? OK, so you break into tears, and uh, you get irritated with your mom, and all these things happen. And there's, I'll give you another situation, and I would like some responses on that as well. Your mom has a very favorite vase, OK? And what happens? She leaves it on your table. And accidentally, you push it down. You're not doing it deliberately. You just push it off, off the table accidentally, and it breaks. And, and what your mother does is she comes, she asks you about it, and you almost get angry and say that she blames you for everything. OK. So what is the right way of responding to this situation? Your mom has left her favorite vase or something. Let's say a beautiful glass bowl that, that's her favorite. She's leaving it on your table. And accidentally, you push it, and it breaks. And she's coming and scolding you. She says, this is my favorite, and you went and broke it. How would you react or respond to that? And what do you think is the right way of responding to it? Any volunteers? Ma'am, apologies yes. uh, um, is the right way, ma'am. Apologizing, yes. yes. How would you go to ego? Yeah. 
okay i you should apologize beautiful uh, but how would you feel inside you are apologizing but would you feel nice and calm inside about it ma'am i feel very please go ahead we would feel so much guilty ma'am you feel guilty okay what else will make her realize that she placed it in the wrong place but at that point of time do you think she is going to accept that because it's broken and she is upset and also understand here that she is the elder one you are the youngster she is the elder one in the relationship okay so what would you expect her to do i like this response the the latest one that said i would point out that it was she who put it on the table yes it is she who put it on the table but do you think that pointing it out to her would make her realize that it's not really your fault that it broke do you think it's going to work okay so one of the things you do is you apologize for what happened apology uh, i'm not able to see that properly just a moment apologize and apologize and i will buy a new vase she likes and console her that's so sweet of you okay so what else Ma'am, if she is elder to me, she should know that placing the things which she loves in an um how to say a place which is dangerous among the kids is yeah. is her fault that she kept there. Yeah. If it comes down, it's not my mistake. Yeah. So what's going to happen is she put the vase and it broke. Okay. It's not. it's nobody's fault here it's very important to understand that the vase broke and it's nobody's fault but the thing is it has the potential to break a relationship you may get uh, yell at each other get angry at each other and not even talk to each other for a few days all because a vase that was put in a place where it didn't belong was broken accidentally by you. okay so how can you deal with the situation what can you do you feel bad it it was there are so many mixed emotions depending on uh, your relationship with your parents each person would feel differently about the situation so there are there are several ways that you can deal with such a situation and one of those things is take a deep breath See, you feel it's not your fault, and yet your mom is blaming you. So, what do you do? Take a deep breath. And what happens when you take a few deep breaths? Why is it important to take a deep breath? And how is taking a deep breath going to help you here? Can someone tell me that? Why is it important to take a deep breath here? And how is doing that going to help you? will keep us calm and still triggering our emotions okay uh, why do you think it will keep you calm taking a deep breath why do you think it will keep you calm that time we'll think ma'am the silence will make us realize the silence will make you realize okay so, okay so now you are just keeping calm and taking your deep and taking a deep breath but your mom is going on and on and on so what will you do then we will start arguing ma'am yeah we will start arguing but instead as you said yes taking a deep breath will make you calm and why does it make you calm it keeps you calm because when you take a deep breath there is more oxygen flooding into your brain and when you are angry what happens inside your body your heart rate your heartbeat rate is going to increase okay and Uh, uh, a lot of other physiological things will happen inside inside of your body and when you take a deep breath 
all these things will calm down because it is taking a calm deep breath is the opposite thing to getting angry whatever is happening inside your body when you're when you're getting angry exactly the opposite thing will happen when you take a deep breath okay so that is why taking a deep breath will help you and other things that you can do is if you like drawing you can start drawing there's something called mandala drawing it's just drawing circles and filling those circles with different kinds of designs and this research has shown that your mind calms down when you do all these things okay and apologize and the other thing is journaling why why do you think that journaling helps writing down about the incident writing it down why do you think that will help you can write about your emotions feelings yeah you write about your emotions for a lot of people just putting it on paper helps that is one thing and if you are really angry you can put it on paper tear it or burn it or whatever okay but what happens is when you are writing it down it will give you some perspective on what is actually going on there and why are you angry and here i would like to introduce another concept where it is not an event itself see a situation happens this breaking of the ways is a situation okay it is not the situation itself that is upsetting you it is the meaning that you are attaching to that situation so it is very very important for us to understand what meaning we attach to situations like this and to analyze and see whether that meaning holds good if it is really true this is where writing down or journaling about your feelings will really help okay any any questions on this any questions or doubts okay let's move on to the next one okay now i uh, why uh, See, one of the reasons I'm asking you to write down, to journal, and all those things is because it is not good to carry on these feelings, these negative feelings about anybody, about our parents, about our teachers, about our friends. It's not good for us. So, to uh, let me let me explain that with an example, with a small story. The story is called the bag of potatoes, and there was once a teacher. who wanted to teach her students a very valuable lesson about fault finding so what she did was she told her students to bring a bag of potatoes each of them to bring a bag of potatoes and she said make sure the potatoes are cooked okay so so now how many potatoes should each student bring each student should bring a certain a specific number of potatoes and the the number of potatoes in the bag is equal to the number of complaints the child has against his or her best friend okay so the, this was the number of potatoes boiled potatoes that each child was supposed to bring so the next day the children brought a bag of each of them brought a bag of potatoes some had one some had two some had even five some didn't have any potatoes at all some had more than five even so the teacher then told them now you have to carry around this bag of potatoes with you wherever you go even to the toilet okay so the children started carrying it and by the end of the second day what do you think happened can someone tell me what happened by the end of the second day to this bag of potatoes it became so heavy lad yeah it was heavy but some had only one no it couldn't have been that heavy remember i said it was cooked potatoes it would have smashed ma'am it would have smashed but does it really matter that it smashed it would be stale 
it would be stale and a uh, smelly yeah that was the response i wanted it 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 would have become stinky very very stinky and the children had to carry it about for a week imagine okay so they they went on they uh, by the end of the week they were uh, when the teacher asked them about it so what did you can now throw away the potatoes now tell me how you felt about carrying around these stinky potatoes with you okay so what do you think the responses was the responses were imagine that you had to carry it around for a week you would be relieved and you would be uh, what can i say fed up of doing it and you would have wondered what the point to doing all this is right so and what the teacher told them was this is what happens when you carry around hard feelings about other people it becomes burdensome and it makes your heart rotten your heart gets rotten and stinky and that would reflect on your relationship with everybody else also okay so what did you learn from the story does the story make sense to you anyone Uh, we showed the lack of the jealousy and highlighted we have to work with others so that yeah. we can be we can lead a burden free life. Yeah. So the the more we are able to let go of things, the more freer we would be because all these carrying grudges, jealousy, complaints, everything is only going to make our hearts very heavy. and we need to let to uh, learn to let go of all our dissatisfaction with other people okay so how do you do that so we'll do a small exercise now uh this this is a visualization exercise okay this is a visualization exercise so what i want you to do is just close your eyes and think of a favorite place can you uh, can some of you tell me what your favorite place is norway garden okay anyone else beach doesn't anyone like the beach beach beautiful what else some people would say forest others would say mountains yeah mountains so whatever doesn't matter what the place is okay just close your eyes and imagine that you are at that place and now take a long deep breath and exhale you are in your favorite place you are sitting there you have found a very comfortable place to sit and you are sitting there with your eyes closed now i would like you to smell to find all the smells in that place Let's take a deep breath, and along with your deep breath, if you are in a garden, you will be able to smell the flowers, the roses. And if you are in a beach, you will be able to smell the sea. And if you are in a mountain, the fresh air. Whatever it is, just use your sense of smell. now feel the place you're sitting on is it hard is it soft if it's the beach feel the texture of the sand you're sitting on or maybe you're sitting on a rock 
is the rock hard is it warm or cool to touch so these are some of the things that you can feel through your sense of touch now i would like you to gently open your eyes you are remember your visualizing and look around you and as you look around you see the beautiful flowers the leaves the sky the waves the tall mountains with trees and you gently lift up your face and as you do that you feel the breeze on your face soothing you and calming you down and now we are going to use your sense of hearing and listen to all the sounds around you the waves the seagulls the other people on the beach the sound of the wind in the mountains the chirping of the birds in the garden and as you do this you also hear the sound of water from a water body and you get up and start walking towards this place and when you reach this place you see cool water in a beautiful spring you want to put your hands into the water and as you do this you feel the coolness of the water and you splash it on your face this feels so refreshing and you want to take a sip of water and when you do this you take you scoop up some water and take a sip you feel the cool water sliding down your throat refreshing you calming you and as this happens all your anger and all your irritation leaves you you feel calm you feel relaxed more able to face whatever situation you need to handle you can slowly and gently open your eyes now and tell me what you experienced what was your experience when you did this exercise what was your experience when you are angry or irritated and you do this exercise you 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 actually get transported to another place your favorite place and you are able to calm yourself that way even though you are not yelling at anybody even though you are not shouting you are able to handle the situation in a more mature way even if the other person has been unfair to you you are able to handle the situation in a more mature way and because of that you feel calmer okay and you don't get stressed that is the bonus of doing this that is the main benefit of doing this okay so now let's move on to the next one
what are the categories of relationships in our lives can someone tell me that there are different categories of relationships okay and what are those categories of relationships anyone you can divide relationships into two basic categories okay one is core relationship and the other is casual relationships okay so what comes under core relationships what are what do you mean by the word core relationships relationship that really matters relationships that really matters okay very good anybody else intimate relationships intimate relationships yes good who else anybody else okay when we talk about core relation uh, core relationships th these are relationships we share with other people it is it has a very deep lasting bond and whatever one person in this relationship does it has a huge impact on the other people within that relationship so core relationship means relationship with family members and relationship with friends very close friends okay there is one very very important thing about core relationships there is one very very important person in your core relationship so can someone guess who that person is any guesses in a core relationship who is the central person in a core relationship god yes god is the central person in our relationships but there is another person who is even more important parents uh, not really anybody take one more guess ourselves beautiful it, this this is a wonderful answer and i would like everyone to clap for this person the most important person in any relationship is ourselves why is this so very important can someone tell me why it is very important to share uh, why is this why is this relationship with ourselves so very important can you see my screen yes ma'am okay so why is uh, why is this relationship with ourselves very important now only we have good relationship with ourselves uh, we can spread it to others yes we need to understand ourselves better okay only then because everything we do will reflect on how we see ourselves our relationship with others depends on how we see ourselves which is why that is very important so i told you that uh, there are two types of uh, relationships one is core relationship and what is the other relationship casual relationship okay casual relationship can someone give me examples of casual relationships friends of friends yeah friends of friends okay if you go to work there is a relationship at the workplace you are all working together uh, apart from friends your other classmates you are in a casual relationship with your other classmates because you are all working together towards a specific purpose or in your church group probably 
and there is another kind of relationship called temporary associations so someone you meet on your train journey you have a conversation with them or you cross a tea stall every day and you smile at that person but you have never spoken to that person all these relationships are casual and temporary relationships and uh, finally coming to the most important aspect what is the essential aspect that should be at the core of all relationships the, that's our relationship with ourself okay and awareness of the self so why is this awareness of the self what is okay so what what is awareness of the self anyone what is awareness of the self analyzing our own thoughts man realizing your own you are right tell me go ahead realize i'm not able to hear you clearly that's why i asked you to repeat it so realizing your own okay so this is the courage to look at ourselves without judging ourselves to be good or bad Okay, to to take a really honest look at honest look at ourselves. What we generally do is when we when we try to take a look at ourselves, we start judging ourselves. Am I right? Can you can you tell me in what ways we judge ourselves? Can someone tell me that? i am incapable i am stupid i can't do this this is not possible for me i am a very stingy person all these judgments we make about ourselves based on what other people tell us okay so when we take an honest look at ourselves we will, we will be able to understand why we are the way we are okay only when we understand why we are the way we are we will be able to make the necessary changes that is needed for us to become a better person to reach out to other people when we need help and be able to build proper relationships with others because see this is very important because it is through the lens of my perspective about myself that i interact with the world let's say that uh, a friend is coming and asking me can you teach me can you teach me math so here i'm thinking that i'm not good at math and even though i know the answer i am i'm wondering whether what if i what if i teach it wrong what will she think of me and i tell her no i don't know okay i'm not even trying here and the other what what happens here the other person knows that we know and she's and she thinks that i am not willing to teach her and that spoils spoils my relationship with her why why is all this happening because i am judging myself to be very poor at something okay does this make sense to you is yes, ma'am okay If you have any doubts here, please ask me because this is a very important point. Can we move on to the next slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, how can I understand myself better? What are the things that I need to do in order to understand myself better? Why is this pause necessary? in situations why is it necessary for me to pause what happens is let's say for example somebody is pushing you okay you are in the assembly i don't know whether you have assembly at your college but you are in the assembly and somebody is pushing you and your class teacher just sees that you have fallen and she stares at you okay what would you feel how would you feel about that and how would you feel about the person who pushed you 
Any responses? How do you feel about it? Wouldn't you be angry? Are you there? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay. Okay. There is one comment in the chat box, ma'am. That is. Okay. Can you read it out to me, please? Ashamed and angry. I want any one of the MA students to lead, please. Since these are the information. Okay. Ashamed and angry. Okay, so you feel ashamed. You feel ashamed that in front of everyone somebody pushed you and you are angry because you are going to get scoldings from the class teacher. Okay. So is this a natural response or not? Is this a natural response? Or do you think that it is wrong to feel ashamed and angry? Can someone tell me the answer to that? At any point, we should believe in ourselves. I am not able to hear you, dear. Can you? At, at any point, so we should believe in ourselves. Can you, can you just type it out? Yeah, it's normal. It is normal to feel. It is normal to feel angry. It is normal to feel ashamed. So how do you deal with that situation? By getting angry at your friend who pushed you? And not talking to that person? How do you deal with that? What happens when you? Uh, ma'am, sorry for the interruption. If you want, you can join with another device, ma'am. Right now, there are only ninety-seven participants. Okay, okay. You can try I'll joining them. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'll do that. Mama, I've sent the request to join. I've sent the request to join. But there's a lot of echo. So I'll get out. It's okay, ma'am. It's okay, ma'am. We'll continue later. There's too much of echo. Okay, how can I understand myself? 
we need to understand ourselves better that's what we spoke about so how can we understand ourselves better what are the steps to understanding building a better relationship with ourselves first and then can anyone answer that question knowing ourselves better any answers to that question okay there are two ways of doing this the first one is analyze our own thoughts and emotions beautiful analyze your own thoughts and emotions because only then we will be able to regulate our mind okay because we think that our mind is not in our control but yes we will be able to control our mind if we choose to control it it's very very important to know that you can choose to control where your mind goes what we normally do is we let our emotions control how our mind reacts to situations but when we choose to control our mind when we choose to uh, take over the control of our mind you can do you can respond to situations instead of reacting to everything now can someone tell me what is the difference between reacting and responding what is the difference between reacting and responding from reacting is something emotional yes and responding is something formal can you uh, can you expand on that can you uh, uh, explain more about responding what do you mean by formal formal in the sense uh, we are in the place to respond something so mm -hmm. uh, uh for uh, that is based on our thoughts we we'll respond to something based on our thoughts but reacting is something emotional a sudden reaction uh, yeah. something like pain joy happiness yeah. sadness something responding yeah. is something uh, what uh, what others ask us to tell about or something uh, which others uh, feel us to explain it that is yeah. uh, responding man yeah that's very beautiful so here someone in the someone has answered that question in the chat box they say respond is to talk in a calmer way and reacting is to explode beautifully put very beautiful so when we react what happens is we we don't even think about it it's something that comes immediately let's say uh, when we take, go back to that uh, incident that we spoke about the situation where the vase fell down and broke and your mom is coming and scolding you so if you react we are immediately going to l back at her and ask her why did you put it there it's not the place for the waste to be okay and why are you scolding me why are you finding fault with me that is how we would do but if we are responding we would just stay calm there because mom is upset because the waste was broken okay it is not your fault and she didn't expect that it will break so it's nobody's fault there so let us look at it from that perspective it is nobody's fault things just happen okay when you look at it like that you will be able to remain calmer and when you are calmer you will soothe her or even if she is going to still be angry you can do the visualization technique that i just taught you okay so these are some of the ways that you can deal with the situation because in every situation in life you cannot be just like that calm all the time no matter what happens so the visualization technique and uh, the deep breathing and all those things that i taught you it is to and the journaling also no the drawing the journaling all those things they are all called coping strategies and it will help you deal with the situation when you are angry and you don't know what to do you will you will find yourself in a lot of situations in your life where you are angry and you have uh, uh it is it is not fair what happened to you is not fair and you are angry and it is okay to be angry at that time but there is no point in reacting to situations because it is not going to help you in any way now let us say there is there are there is a road and there are two paths there is a fork in the road okay 
and one one fork leads to a dead end and the other leads to the place where you want to go so would you take the dead end knowing that it is a dead end would you choose to take the dead end no no why because we know that is a dead end yeah similarly reacting is a dead end it is not going to get anywhere and it is only going to make the situation worse it is only going to uh, make our relationships also worse so learn to respond to situations and when can you respond only when you take a pause when you reflect and when you calm yourself you will be able to respond in that situation here i would like to uh, introduce another term called assertiveness have you heard of the word assertiveness has anyone heard of the term assertiveness what is uh, okay now have you heard of the term aggressive is yes, no what is aggression what is aggressive when you say that somebody is being aggressive what does that mean angry angry yes and what how does being harsh yes how does an aggressive person behave they'll be arguing for uh, every single thing yeah and have you heard of the word passive aggression okay passive aggression means let's say you the principal calls you to uh, shout at you for something and you feel that it's not fair okay so when when you're talking to the principal you're calm and quiet and you don't say anything you say i'm sorry ma'am but when you walk out of the door you bang the door and pretend that it was a wind that did it okay so there you're trying to be calm you're showing that you're calm but your your action shows that you're angry inside that is called passive aggression so you would see a lot of moms doing that you know like they are angry and they go into the kitchen and they start banging around the vessels and all those things then you know that your mom is really angry but she is not saying anything so that is called passive aggression and there is a third way of behaving called assertiveness what is assertiveness this is very very important for us to know because it helps us in all relationships assertiveness is uh, not see you don't give in you don't let others uh, destroy your self respect while at the same time you try your best not to hurt the other person by how you convey what you want to convey to them is this clear have you understood what assertiveness is is it clear you say something to the other person okay you say something to them where you assert yourself that is you point out that they were not right in treating you the way they did but at the same time you are conveying that in a very respectful manner so you are not going to blame them you will not defend yourself here okay you are just saying things as it is that is called assertiveness okay so this is this is a very important trait and it's a useful skill to learn okay let's go on to the next one so we were talking about relationship with self okay so how do you nurture your relationship with yourself have you heard of the word self care have you heard of the have you heard of the word self care and what does self care mean what is self care can someone tell me what is self care doing things we love and pampering ourselves okay okay that is one way of putting it 
Any other responses? Remember, there are no right answers. There are no wrong answers. Any other responses? What is self-care? Taking good care of our health. In what way? Yeah, yes. to give importance to diet. diet and exercise. Diet, exercise. What else? Getting rid of stress. OK. Uh, let's say that you're taking good care of your house. Okay, you're taking, I'm saying that you're taking good care of your house. So can you describe how you have taken good care of your house? What does it mean when I say that? Uh, I'm not able to hear you. Can you repeat that? When I say that you have taken very good care of your house, what does it mean? Understanding deeply yourself, no? Yeah, understanding deeply. Understanding yourself deeply. I like this response very much. Somebody has said, throwing away the clutter. Okay. Sheila. Beautiful. Throwing away the clutter. So when, when uh, someone says that you have uh, maintained the house very well, that means there is no clutter and you have done a very good job in maintaining the neatness of the house. Similarly, throwing away the clutter in your mind. What is clutter from your mind? When it comes to your mind and your thoughts and feelings, what is clutter? Can you tell me? What is what is negative thoughts? Tell me. Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts, yes. Hard feelings. Hard feelings towards other people, yes. Junk, yes. Jealous, grudge, beautiful. Yes, and how will you throw them away? Envy, yes. How will you throw them away? You know the technique. We have already described the technique. So can someone tell me how do you throw them away? How do you let them go? Calm ourselves, yes. Take a deep breath. Calm yourself. And there is another, and this visualization technique that I taught you. That is another very beautiful technique that I use very commonly with my clients. What I ask them to do is just sit, uh, close your eyes and sit down in a place. Okay. And then take a calm, deep breath four or five times. And then imagine that there is a very big box in front of them. And put all their anger, all their negative feelings into the box. And then close the box. And then imagine that they are going to a mountain top, throwing it away, throw away the box from the mountain and watch it disappear completely. That is one technique that you can use because what happens when you suppress your feelings, you're not dealing with your feelings and you keep suppressing your feelings. What happens when you do that? What happens when you don't deal with your feelings and you're suppressing all your feelings? You're angry and somebody says, okay, adjust pani tere. Amma padana senja sayeta. So adjust pani ko. So how do you feel? What happens when you keep suppressing your feelings? One day it will burst out. Okay, there is going to be, there is, you will have a threshold. There is only so much of pain and irritation that you can take. And one day it is all going to burst out. And then what will happen? All kinds, all the old clutter, all the old kuppai will come out. Okay, so it is better to deal with your emotions then and there. Only then we will be able to handle our relationships better. We should not be carrying any clutter, any, any hard feelings, any grudge. Because uh, as we spoke, when we spoke about becoming aware of of ourselves the the main person it is going to hurt is ourselves we will be the 
என்ன சொல்றது இந்த கோலாட்ரல் டேமேஜ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கோலாட்ரல் டேமேஜ் டு ஆல் தீஸ் ஃபீலிங்ஸ் will be us me the self okay which is why it is very very important to take care of ourselves okay the next point is how aware am i of my own strengths and weaknesses are you all aware of all your strengths and weaknesses are we that is one point that is that goes into uh, improving your relationship with yourself nurturing your relationship with yourself knowing knowing about your strengths and weaknesses now how will you know about your strengths and weaknesses how will you know about your about your weaknesses leave alone strength everybody will tell you how will you know about your weaknesses how will you know about your weaknesses you can type in the chat box how will you know what your weaknesses are again listening to other people other people will point out our weaknesses but in a harsh tone most of the time and because the tone is harsh we don't listen to what they are saying but when somebody is talking harshly to us and we actually listen to them listen to what they say then we will understand whether we are having a particular weakness and in the situation you are facing is whether we actually have a particular weakness and it is good to know that we are weak in certain areas knowing that we are weak in certain areas is actually a strength knowing your strengths and weaknesses is a strength so it is good to admit that we are having weaknesses okay and another very important thing is we generally uh, how do you project your strength do you project your strength by putting other people down i am very clever at doing this so somebody else who is not able to do it is not clever that person is stupid so when we do that a relationship with other people not only to the people that uh, you are expressing you are projecting yourself a relationship with everybody else will get spoiled because nobody likes a person who's too proud and uh, who's insensitive okay the other the other thing is we should always be aware that our ego plays a star role in all our interactions with others any any conflict we are having with others any misunderstanding we are having with others if you sit journal it and reflect on it you will see that it is mostly our ego that is at the core of the misunderstanding on the weak on the ego if we are able to let go of that ego we will be able to repair any damages that we do to our relationships okay so we need to really understand uh, the role that ego plays and here another thing uh, we need to understand is we cannot change i have already said this we cannot change or we cannot control the way other people think or behave okay but what is in our control can someone tell me what we can actually control what is within our control what what can we control i have told you what we cannot control so what can we control we can control whether we react or respond to the situation right we can control how we respond to the situation whether we are going to make the situation worse or whether we are going to stay calm and repair whatever damage has happened so that is always a choice that we always have but even choosing not to take that choice is a choice okay so this is one very important thing that we need to understand so next we'll go into what are the building blocks to a relationship how can you build a relationship what are the building blocks can someone tell me that what are the building blocks to a relationship be a good listener be a good listener beautiful what is not judge someone not judge someone beautiful 
remaining unjudgmental that's a beautiful one what else love honesty being honest with yourself and with the other person dependability what is dependability can someone tell me what is dependability and why it is important in a relationship what is dependability ma'am we should be in such a way that others must be able to depend on us yeah let's let's say that uh, you will meet someone at this particular uh, place for a group study at this particular time okay uh, at 10 o'clock in the uh, at 7 o'clock in the evening let's meet at uh, uh, my house for study okay and you come to my house and i have gone somewhere else and i have not come back so that is going to be that person is not going to uh, think that he or she can depend on me when i do that okay and the next thing is commitment commitment commit committing yourself to the relationship and doing whatever is needed for the relationship to flourish so that is another thing and transparency what is transparency it should be an open book. yeah beautiful it should be an open kind of thing like there should be no double meanings and doing one thing and saying one thing stuff like that that is what transparency is about and there is one very very important ingredient to building a good relationship what is it it should be trustworthy very good beautiful trustworthy and the final one there are a lot more but i am only putting one more thing any guesses can you see that respect okay when you respect others so that is another ingredient to a good relationship okay now the next one is really important and i am expecting all of you to have a lot of questions regarding this how do i enhance my relationship i can enhance by my relationship by changing my attitude so to change my attitude i need to move from expecting things to other from others to accepting people as they are so is this really possible is it possible to accept people as they are all the time not really ma'am it's not really easy to follow okay again i will come back to the same point that uh, we cannot control we cannot control how other people think or behave okay so and again remember that uh, fork in the road that i spoke to you about there are two forks one is leading to a dead end and the other leads to wherever you want to go so would you choose the dead end or would you choose the road that leads you to wherever you want to go you would choose the road right you will not choose the dead end so when you keep expecting things from others every time and uh, and every time you expect and then you get disappointed you expect you get disappointed so it is a dead end right so it is easier actually if you start accepting people for who they are it will be easier for you it is easier for you you try it it may sound difficult here but when you and initially the first few times it is really difficult because it has become a habit for us like this is how a person should be why is this person behaving like this so asking having expectations from others has become a habit for us and because of that we are not able to accept it but when we start accepting people we will find that our relationships become better 
and we are more at peace with ourselves and we are more content in life which is why this point is very very important the next one is looking into what i can give as opposed to what i can get out of others so like whenever let's say for instance i have to conduct a session in a school okay there are there are a lot of voluntary programs that i do and when i do that uh, one of the questions that a lot of people ask me is how much do they pay you and when i say that no it's a voluntary thing that i'm doing so people ask why but why you can get paid for it why do you want to do this as a voluntary thing okay so when when you do something when you uh, this is this is the general attitude that we have because it is a social thing you know it is the way uh, we have been brought up like when when always we want something out of others but when you start giving without expectations that is how you enhance your relationship you will find that your relationships become really better when you start giving without expecting any anything from the other person whatever you need will come to you automatically the other thing is understanding that difficult people and situations are opportunities for us to learn but they are not headaches or problems for us to solve can someone explain this to me how can a difficult situation be an opportunity for me to learn let's say uh, let's take this thing uh, by uh, lord jesus christ for example he says if somebody hits you on one cheek show him the other when i was younger and even a few years ago that never made any sense to me why would anyone do that when someone hits you on one cheek why would you show the other cheek because can someone explain that to me anyone forgiveness is the best form of revenge pardon is the best form of revenge but how is it even possible every time ma'am it is it may not be possible every time but you can do it some of the times right maybe ma'am yeah it is difficult you are right it's very difficult and for most of us it's not even possible so how can you do this to to be able to do this you need to be able to change your perspective okay let's say for example every single day before you go to uh, you before you come to college in the morning your mom doesn't have the breakfast ready okay and you are hungry you are really hungry and you get irritated and uh, uh, it's <laughs> it's annoying and there is a lot of things going on there emotional tug of wars and all those things okay and here if i tell you adjust how is it even possible because she is going to if you don't say anything she is going to repeat the same thing again and again and again but my question to you is i'm sure you would have done this this has happened again and again and there is no change whether you shout at her or whatever you do that is her behavior that is her attitude so again dead end so why don't you take the other road and move from expectation to understanding and how is this a learning opportunity you can plan the previous night okay that food is not going to be ready so how can i ensure that food is ready and maybe you can do something yourself and this is a skill that you have learned to manage a difficult situation without any hazards does this make sense to you does this make any sense yes, to you okay so difficult people and situations when you actually sit and think write down and all those things there is always a learning from that there is always a learning that is what i am learning now like 10 years ago i didn't know all these things but now 
I'm, and if somebody had told me about this, I would have just laughed at them and asked, do you think I'm stupid? So now I know. I know that every every situation, every difficult situation and handling difficult people is an opportunity for me to learn and not only to learn, but also grow as a person. So which is why this is very, very important. Okay, and the next, we are coming to the end of the presentation. And what are what do you think are the challenges to relationships, to having a good relationship with other people? What are the challenges that you face every single day? Misunderstanding, yes. What is? Uh, we raise up the mistakes of the past. Yes. We keep going back to the past. And what else? Ego. Beautiful. Taking people for granted. Taking people for granted, yes. And how can you resolve all these issues? These are all the challenges. And I would like to add two more. Poor listening skills is one. And we don't know how to resolve conflicting situations. When there is a fight, we just go with our emotions and what is right, what is fair, and all that. So there are so many things that are behind uh, a situation, behind why a person behaves the way they behave. So when we are calm, and when we reflect, and when we pause, and when we uh, journal, we will come to know a lot of things about ourselves and about the other person. So one of the things that we can really try to do is in difficult situations, we can try to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and understand what they are going through so that we will get a sense of why they are behaving the way they do. And then if we take it from there, we will be able to handle the situation better. Okay. Any any other uh, any other challenges? So these are the core challenges that we face. Any other challenges that you can think of? Anyone? High expectations. Yes. And uh, can you explain why high expectations are a problem for us? How it uh, hampers relationships? When it is not fulfilled. Yeah, when it is not fulfilled, then what happens? When it is not fulfilled, what happens? It uh, spoils our inner peace at one point of time. Yeah, and what do we do? It spoils our peace. And what do we do? Overthink okay. about it more. Yeah, we overthink and we react with that person. See, here, uh, remember, we are talking about relationships. Okay, and when we overthink and uh, what we do is we show we show our emotions to the to the people around us, to the people involved. Right. So I'm ready to take questions now. And before I take questions, as ma'am introduced me already, I'm Bhavani Hari Krishnan. I run my counseling services from Virupuram. My services include both online and face to face sessions. And here's my contact information if anybody is interested. And I deal with uh, all kinds of, I, I, I don't want to say mental health. I would like to use the term mental wellness, mental and emotional wellness. I deal with mental and emotional wellness problems. And I also deal with addiction related problems. It can be any kind of addiction, drugs, alcohol, or gaming habit addictions, whatever, all kinds of addiction problems. So if you need help, you can always reach out to me. 
Now I'm ready for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, if you have any questions, you can ask that this was person. It's a very good opportunity for you. Thank you, ma'am. You made it very interactive. Uh, thank you for the session, ma'am. Can anyone can any one of you give a feedback of today's session orally? The feedback is uh, feedback form was put in the chat box. All of you do submit the feedback. And I want one of you to give her oral feedback. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, the session was really thought-provoking, practical, and like. And it really helped us construct ourselves in the framework of uh, relationship. Thank you so much for the beautiful session. Thank you for that. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. I can share the PPT with all of you. If you are interested, you let your ma'am know. I will share the PPT with all of you so that you can go through it. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, yes, WhatsApp me. I will be able to answer your questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for your presence and uh, uh, for making this session a very meaningful one. I hope the students will be benefited. Thank you very much. And uh, um, I also thank Susegiran sir for making this arrangement. And at this outset, I also thank a few of the volunteers in second BA, Joshua for uh, taking screenshots as well as uh, Akshaya and uh, um, for, making the, uh, for making the invite. So I thank each one of you and thank you, ma'am. It was very useful for us, and we'll get back to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You can leave, thanks for inviting me, and thank you, students, for being so interactive. Thank you so much.
Joshua, you can end the meet now. Very basic. Experience is also a great teacher. So, the